What became of the fallen angels' wives after they were given access to these divinely revealed secrets is a mystery in and of itself. They would become the mothers of whole magic defiled generations after that. As you can see, these women were the first witches in recorded history, yet because of this, they received an incredibly strange penalty. Additionally, the Book of Enoch states that the wives of the fallen angels would have become sirens. This is purportedly the source of the mermaid mythology. But there's a small catch. The siren myth originated in ancient Greece, and the earliest known documents date back to approximately 300 BC, hence the mermaids are not sirens. According to the ancient legend, sirens resemble birds and would soar around boats, enticing sailors with their mesmerizing voices until they shipwreck them upon the rocky shores. See, if the fallen angels' wives had truly become sirens, they would have resembled birds more. However, I believe the wives of the fallen angels became songbirds of the deep blue sea rather than mermaids in the water. So, let's go back to the Bible and talk about the women that the fallen angels married. The best place to go and get this story is in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1. When mankind began to proliferate on the world and daughters were born, the sons of God saw their beauty and took them as brides. And the Lord said, My soul shall not always strive with man, for he is also flesh but his days shall be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days. And after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and bore children to them, the same became powerful men of old, heroes of renown. And God observed that man's depravity was great on earth, and that his imagination and thoughts were always bad. And the Lord repented for creating man on earth, and it saddened him in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, and fowls of the air, for it repents me that I have created them. But Noah discovered grace in the sight of the Lord. These are Noah's generations. Noah was a just and perfect man throughout his generations, and he walked with God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was also corrupt before God, and it was rife with bloodshed. And God looked at the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, since all mankind had perverted his method on earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So, from this scripture in Genesis chapter 6, the sons of God were believed to be the fallen angels, while the daughters of men were the human women in the time of Enoch, up till the time of Noah. So, if the wives of the fallen angels were humans, how did they become the sirens, who were believed to be the first set of witches on the earth? Well, let's see how these myths were sneaked in the ancient Christians' beliefs and how they are related. By the 4th century, when pagan beliefs were replaced by Christianity, believing in literal sirens was discouraged. Sirens are female-headed animals with bird-like bodies. Traditionally, they dwelt on an island in the sea and utilized the seductive charm of their song to entice mariners to their demise on the rocks that surrounded their island. Sirens blend women with birds in a variety of ways. In early Greek art, they were shown as birds with female heads, avian feathers, and scaly feet. Later, they were shown as feminine figures with bird legs, with or without wings, playing a variety of musical instruments, particularly harps. According to the 10th century Byzantine Encyclopedia Suda, they were sparrows from their chests up and women below, or small birds with women's faces. Later, sirens were portrayed as attractive ladies whose bodies, not just their words, are enticing. Though many similar monsters exist in myths around the world, sirens are best known for their origins in Greek mythology and Germanic legend. Some Greeks claimed there were just two, Aglophim and Thelzepia. Others believe there were three, either Pazino, Aglate, and Thelzepia or Parthino, Lygia, and Lycosia, and still others believe there were five. Some said there were up to thirteen, names including Thelzepia, Felxio, Felxino, Mal, Aglophonos, Aglape, Aglophim, Pacino, Pazino, Pisotho, Parthino, Lygia, Lycosia, Raiden, and Teles. Their parentage also vary. Some consider their father to be Forces, a sea deity who also fathered the original Gorgons and several other monsters and sea creatures, while others believe their father was Achilles, a river deity. 
Their mother is frequently identified as one of the muses, Terpsichore or Melpomene, a nymph, Sterope, or the earth itself, Gaia. The Germanic siren, however, was unique. She was known as Lorelei, sometimes spelled Lorley. At times she resembled the sirens of Greek myth, while at others she was the spirit of a betrayed lady yearning for her long-lost love. She was sometimes described as an invisible spirit whose voice was all that remained of her after death, comparable to the Greek tale of the nymph Echo. The ability of a siren to produce a song so lovely that, as sailors steered off course, attempting to reach the warm embrace of their assailants, they were lured to a brutal death on the rocks of the island where the seductive songstresses resided. For the Greeks, that island was known as Anthemusa, Anthemoessa. For Lorelei, it was an enormous rocky cliff named in her honor upon her death. They are extraordinarily attractive as a result of their heritage. They are often blonde, but various hair hues, even those considered abnormal to other humanids, are also possible. Similarly, their appearance ranges from lithe and sylphic to voluptuous and buxom. Furthermore, some resemble typical human women, while others have wings, a bird body from the waist down, or a hybrid avian woman physique. Skin tone varies, as do eyes. In terms of hierarchy, they are frequently born in groups known as choirs that remain together throughout their lives. The eldest sister frequently has the most captivating voice and is thus the choir's leader. If such a situation came, they would never allow another siren to join their chorus, nor would they be required to try to join another choir if their previous one disbanded. If a siren is forced to leave her sisters because to the death of her choir, her own impending death, pregnancy, or banishment, she frequently chooses to go off to her own island, or other solitary spot, and do business as needed. Otherwise, a siren's sisters do not expect her to leave the choir. Saint Jerome, who authored the Latin Vulgate version of the Bible, used the word sirens to translate Hebrew tanim, jackals, in the book of Isaiah 13 verse 22, as well as a word for owls, in the book of Jeremiah 50 verse 39. In Clement of Alexandria's second century teaching, the siren is allegorically depicted as a beautiful courtesan or prostitute who sings delightful melodies to men and represents the evil of pleasure. Later writers, like as Ambrose, 4th century, reinforced the siren's role as a symbol or allegory for worldly temptations. This is not an endorsement of Greek mythology. The early Christian Yehimerist understanding of mythologized human beings gained a long-lasting boost from Isidore of Seville's Etymology, c. 560-636. The Greeks believed that there were three sirens, part virgins, part birds, with wings and claws. One of them sang, another played the flute, and the third used the lyre. They lured seafarers to shipwreck with songs. According to the fact, they were prostitutes who led passengers to poverty and were thought to cause shipwrecks. They have wings and claws because love flies and cuts. They are thought to have remained in the waters because a wave formed Venus. Now, because they appear together in the Septuagint translations of the aforementioned Isaiah 13 verses 21 to 22 and 34 colon 14, the Siren and Onocentaur are the focus of a single chapter in the Physiologus. They also occur together in several Latin bestiaries of the first family subgroup known as Beisidor. Beis remained in the waves because a wave produced Venus. The siren's bird-like description from ancient sources was preserved in the Latin version of the Physiologus, 6th century, and a number of succeeding bestiaries until the 13th century, but the mermaid shape was incorporated at some point during the interim. It was also depicted as a woman fish, mermaid, in the Bern Physiologus, dated to the mid-9th century, despite the surrounding text describing it as avian. An English-made Latin bestiary dated 1220 to 1250 depicts a group of sirens as mermaids with fish tails swimming in the sea, despite the fact that the text indicated they resembled flying fowl, volatilis habit figurum, down to their feet. Illustrations of the siren as a pure mermaid became prevalent in second family, bestiaries, and she was represented clutching a musical instrument in the classical style, but also holding what appeared to be an eelfish. One of the older codices in this set, dated late 12th century, contains an illustration of the siren mermaid holding such a fish. 
A counterexample is provided in which the pictured sirens, a group of three, are bird-like and correspond to the text. The siren was occasionally depicted as a hybrid, with a human torso, a fish-like lower body, and bird-like wings and feet. While the wings of the Harley 3244 emerge from about the shoulders, other hybrid versions have the siren's wings hanging at the waist. In addition, a siren may be clutching a comb or a mirror. Thus, the comb and mirror, which are now symbols of mermaids throughout Europe, are derived from bestiaries that describe the siren as a vain creature that needs such accessories. So, I think the sirens are in no way related to the wives of the fallen angels, and any form of relation may just be a myth. Thank you for your support.